Are you looking to build influence? Or maybe to drive more traffic? But bottom line, you want to change the game. You've come to the right place. Welcome to the Business Building Book Club. We're going to give you the tools you need to succeed both online and in person. Brought to you by Coach Molly and Three Pines Leadership. Hey, Visibility Hackers, and welcome to this episode of the Business Building Book Club. I'm your host, Coach Molly from visibilityhacking.com, and as per usual, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here today with us. We're diving back into Russell Brunson's Expert Secrets, his underground playbook for converting your casual visitors into lifelong fans. And if you don't already have your copy, make sure you grab it, description down below, absolutely free, just cover the cost of shipping, it's all yours. So, without further ado, we're going to dive into secret number... 13 now we've remember a few weeks ago we started talking about the perfect webinar framework last time we were in the book we talked about the big domino and today we're going to be talking about the three secrets that that big domino knocks over so starting on chapter 229 in the new hardcover edition let's get started shall we the three secrets in a perfect world, you would present someone with your new opportunity. You'd know what the big domino was. You'd tell them an epiphany bridge story to give them a new belief. The big domino would fall and you'd have a customer or follower for life. Sometimes that does happen. One good epiphany story and that they're all in. Many times though, once you change that big belief for them, they immediately start coming up with other concerns. This is especially true with more expensive opportunities and big life changes. So step one is to identify their three core false beliefs. I found that there are three core false beliefs that come to the surface and keep someone from buying, even if they believe the new opportunity is right for them. The vehicle, internal beliefs, and external beliefs. The vehicle. Other false beliefs that may, they may have about the vehicle framework or new opportunity that you're presenting. Internal false beliefs. Beliefs about their own abilities to execute on this new opportunity. External false beliefs. These are false beliefs they may have about outside forces that could keep them from success. Things that are beyond their individual control, such as time or the economy. In secret 10, you started to build your story inventory with the false beliefs that you felt your dream customers had in each of these areas. You'll be using these stories throughout the content section of the presentation to rewrite the stories that are holding them back from success. New opportunity for network marketing. Here's an example. Chains of false belief would be your in your vehicle would be network marketing doesn't work. The experience would be, I've tried to sign up my mom and she got mad. The story is, if I try multi-level marketing, I'll lose my family. And the new epiphany bridge is that you can generate leads and sales online. Look at the false beliefs that you listed in secret number 10 and decide which of those beliefs is core, is the core one for each section that would keep the big domino from falling down. You will create epiphany bridge stories for each of those core false beliefs. And you'll also create epiphany bridge stories for the other false beliefs to use as supporting stories. Let me show you how this works. If I were going to get someone to believe that funnels are the only way to 10x the growth of their company, and I told them my epiphany bridge story about why I think funnels are the greatest thing since sliced bread, here are the potential false beliefs that may come up in each section. False belief number one, the vehicle. Funnels sound cool, but I don't understand how they work for me. False belief number two, internal beliefs. I'm sold on funnels, but I'm not technically inclined, so I don't think I could build one. False belief number three, external beliefs. I think I could build a funnel, but even if I did, I don't know how to drive traffic to it. Step number two. Write three epiphany bridge stories. Now that I have the three core, core false beliefs, I have to find the epiphany bridge stories that will break their core chains of false belief and create a new story for them. 
False belief number one. I don't understand how it would work for me. For this, I share the Epiphany Bridge story about how I learned about the vehicle. I tell them my Tony Robbins and Porter Sansbury stories showing them about modeling success as well as my funnel hacking story about how we modeled the, mach the Marine D3 funnel to, our, to build our NutraCell funnel and how they can do that with any successful funnel in their market. I then teach them my frameworks to show them what the strategy is without the tactics. False belief number two, I'm not technical. For this, I share the Epiphany Bridge story about how I overcame my own internal false beliefs of not being technical. I tell the story about how I used to have a big tech team building funnels that cost thousands of dollars and how we were able to change that after we built ClickFunnels. I then gave my framework or my strategy for building funnels and I show them a product demo so that they can see how easy it is, even if they're not technical. False belief number three, I don't know how to drive traffic. For this, I share the Epiphany Bridge story about how I overcame external belief, false beliefs of not knowing how to drive traffic. I tell them my story about how I reverse engineer from where my competitors get traffic so I can easily get traffic from the same places. I then give them my framework or I show them the strategy on how they can get traffic into their funnels. Step number three, write three secrets. Finally, I rewrite each of the false beliefs with their accompanying Epiphany Bridge stories into a secret using a how-to statement that hints at my framework being the key to their desired result. Curiosity is the key. I make sure the secrets cause curiosity so people will want to listen. Here's how I rewrote my three core false beliefs into my three secrets. Secret number one, funnel hacking. How to ethically steal more than a million dollars worth of funnel hacks from your competitors for less than a hundred dollars. Secret number two, funnel cloning. How to clone a proven funnel inside of ClickFunnels in less than 10 minutes. And secret number three, my number one traffic hack. How to get the exact same customers who are currently going to your competitors to start coming to your funnel instead. Now that you have all three of these elements, you have the foundation you need to start creating the content section of your presentation. You've identified the one big domino that will keep people, that will get people to believe in your message, as well as the three core false beliefs that are holding that domino up. You'll use the stories to systematically knock down each of these beliefs holding up that big domino. When all three of the core false beliefs have been knocked down, the big domino tumbles. When that happens, you have introduced the belief necessary for people to take action. It's all about breaking the false belief patterns, holding your prospects back from rebuilding true beliefs. Breaking and rebuilding false belief patterns. Everything you have done to this point has been designed to encourage curiosity, build rapport, and introduce the new opportunity. Now you're transitioning to the content section of the presentation. You'll be tempted to switch into teacher mode at this point. And if you're not careful, it will destroy your sales. This is not a teaching presentation. This is a presentation to inspire people to take action and change their lives. This is a presentation to inspire people to take action and to change their lives. This presentation will inspire. Oh my God, I've read it three times in a row. Let's start that again. Breaking and rebuilding false belief patterns. Everything you have done to this point has been designed to encourage curiosity, build rapport, and introduce the new opportunity. Now we're transitioning to the content section of the presentation. You'll be tempted to want to switch into teacher mode at this point, and if you're not careful, it will destroy your sales. At this point, you're not teaching a presentation. This is a presentation to inspire people to take action to change their lives. You can teach the strategy or what they need to do, but do not teach the tactics or how to do it. Teaching the tactics is what you do after they have purchased. If you do teach the tactics, it's the surest way to kill your sales. Remember, you are providing a framework strategy then focusing on identifying the false belief patterns behind the strategy, breaking them, and rebuilding them with the truth. 
If you don't break your listeners' false beliefs about the strategy, no matter how many tactics you give them, they'll never have success. They have to believe first, or everything else is pointless. I'm sure that for some of you, this concept doesn't make sense or you got a little upset about it. When I first tried to sell something I had created, I knew I would change people's lives. I did it in teacher mode. I taught my best stuff, knowing that as soon as my audience heard it, they would want more, right? Wrong. Instead, people told me my content was amazing. But because I didn't rewrite their stories in their minds, they went back to their same old patterns. That was tragedy. To be that close to changing someone's life but not accomplishing it because I gave them the tactics before they were truly converted. While I was trying my best to help them, I was actually, it actually hurt them because they didn't shift their beliefs, didn't buy anything, and never changed their lives. I was failed. I was a failed expert and coach. In New Testament times, Paul told the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 3, 2, I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hereto ye were not able to bear it. If he, would hear, if he would have given them the meat first, they couldn't have handled it yet. And the same is true for your dream customers. If you must change their false belief patterns about your strategy first, then you can change their lives. But if you don't change their beliefs first, you'll never have a chance to change their lives. I honestly believe that the greatest service you can provide for someone is getting them to buy something. The act of buying creates a commitment that causes someone to take action. Dozens of my friends have come to my events as free guests, where someone sitting, in the, sitting next to them had paid $50,000 to be in the same room. The strange thing is that for none of these friends, none of these friends have ever launched successful businesses from the info they got at the event. None. Yet for those who paid to be in the room, our success rate is almost 100%. One of my early mentors, Bill Glazer, explained that I was keeping people from success because I was teaching them. I was so confused. And it took a few years before I understood what he meant and how to change my method so that it would work. Over the years, I slowly learned how to structure my content in such a way that it teaches and inspires, but also, and most important, causes people to take action. For some of you, this will feel strange at first but you've, but because you aren't teaching all the cool tactics you want to share. But you need to understand that the type of teaching you are doing here is the foundation for change. I remember being frustrated the first time I did a presentation this way. When I was done, two very distinct things happened. First, instead of making a few sales like I normally did, I made hundreds of sales. And second, ten times more people than usual told me that the content changed their lives. It's kind of funny. Even though I wasn't teaching the tactics yet, I was breaking beliefs that I had held them for years and giving them new, empowering beliefs. This is actually teaching in the most purest form. It's just different than what you're used to. The time for teaching, the tactics will come, but your customers need to come with the right belief systems first. The three secret slides. For many people, the initial story will get them excited, but objections and false beliefs will also start to pop up as soon as you introduce the new opportunity. This is where you transition to the content section of the webinar, where you will start breaking and rebuilding their false belief patterns. Slide number seven, transition to the three secrets slide. Introduce what you're going to teach during the webinar. You already created the titles of these three secrets so you can plug them in here and introduce them to everyone. Here's what we're going to cover during the next 45 minutes or so. Secret number one, funnel hacking, how to ethically steal more than a million dollars worth of funnel hacks from your competitors in less than $100. Secret number two, funnel cloning, how to clone their proven funnel inside of ClickFunnels for in less than 10 minutes. Secret number three, my number one traffic hack, how to get the exact same customers who are currently going to your competitors' funnels to start coming to your funnel instead. Slide number eight, state secret number one. Here you will quickly state the first secret. Secret number one, how to ethically steal more than a million dollars worth of funnel hacks from your competitors for less than $100. Introduce your first framework, the vehicle. 
During the next set of slides, you will be presenting the first framework you alluded to during your origin story. They've heard you talk about it, they've seen your results with it as well as the results of others, and they've already seen how it's transformed you as a person. The information will become the first framework you introduce to them. In this process, we introduce the framework, share the story about how we learned or earned it, teach the strategy or what is it, and show a case studies of others who have applied the same framework. Slide number nine. Introduce the framework slide, or the vehicle. This slide introduces a framework your audience will be learning. They've already heard about it in your initial Epiphany Bridge story, so, they're going, so you're going to remind them of what it is and tell them what it's called. This is where they will start taking notes and open their minds to learn. You can say something like, Remember earlier I told you about the framework we developed that helped me to get desired result? Take out your pen and paper and let's take notes because I'm going to walk you through this framework. I call it the proprietary name of your framework. You're not teaching them the strategy behind the framework yet. You're just telling them what it is and it's called what it is, what it's called, and reminding them of what it did for you. Slide number 10. Share the learned or earned vehicle story. Now that they've already, now that they're ready to learn the strategy, you need to step back and tell them the story about how you learned or earned this framework. Without this pre-frame, your audience won't value the gold that you've, that you are about to give them. Epiphany Bridge origin story versus Epiphany Bridge vehicle story. Many people get confused here because they're not sure how this story is different from the origin story you told during the introduction. This story is your origin story about how you discovered the new opportunity and turned it into a framework. This story is about how you actually developed the framework. Epiphany Bridge Origin Story. In your webinar that built click in my webinar that built ClickFunnels initially, the origin story I told was my potato gun story. The quick version is this. Backstory. I want excuse me, I wanted to make money to support my wife. The journey I started selling potato gun DVDs and got shut down by Google. New opportunity. Mike Filsame told me about an upsell. I discovered funnels. Framework. I built funnel frameworks to grow my companies. Achievement. I made tons of money and my wife retired so she could have kids and be a stay-at-home mom. Epiphany Bridge Vehicle Story. This story, Epiphany Bridge Story, this second Epiphany Bridge story I'm telling here is about the vehicle framework. How did I discover it? For those who have been to that presentation, here are the highlights behind the Epiphany Bridge framework. The backstory. Tony Robbins said to model people who were successful. Journey. I launched a supplement company. It struggled. New opportunity. A funnel, I funnel hacked a competitor and saw their funnel. My team and I modeled it and sales 10 x overnight. Framework. How to hack a funnel. Step one, build funnel to find a funnel to model. Step two, funnel hack it, buy the product and see the funnel structure. Step number three is create a blueprint for the funnel you need to build. Step four is build it in click funnels. Achievement, my success story and lots of stories from other funnel hackers. You'll notice that here I was able to tell the story about the framework and then show the step-by-step -step strategy of the framework. Slide number 11, teach the strategy slides. This is where you will teach the strategy of each step of the framework. Often, if time permits, I tell a mini epiphany bridge story for some of the steps in the framework. For example, step one, find a funnel to model. Step two, funnel hack it, buy the product and check out the funnel structure. Backstory, I found another supplement funnel to hack, Journey. Their funnel wasn't great, I modeled it and it did okay. New opportunity, I found a supplement funnel that was really good. Framework, I modeled the look, feel, layout, and price points. Achievement, the funnel 10 x almost overnight. Step three, create a blueprint for the funnel you build. Step four, build it in ClickFunnels. You'll notice that I showed my audience what to do. Find a funnel, buy the product, create a blueprint, find a f build the funnel in ClickFunnels. But I didn't show them the tactical how. 
That how would be me showing them where to find a funnel, the criteria of good funnels to model, things I look for in a funnel, such as structure, design, the stuff, the how is reserved for that training they, that they are buying. If you spend time in the weeds teaching the tactics here, you will lose them. Once again, your only goal is to get them to believe the strategy will work for them. After they believe, then you can teach them the tactics inside of your training. Slide 12, case study slides. Here you will show your case studies of others who have shared your framework and have gotten the results uh, and the results that they have achieved by following them. Slide 13, share other supporting Epiphany Bridge story slides. You just shared your Epiphany Bridge story about how you discovered your framework and then taught the strategy behind your framework. If time permits, you can also share shorter versions of additional stories that can help knock down other false beliefs your audience may have about the vehicle framework. These are the supporting stories that you identified in your story inventory list. It's time to revisit the list and use those stories to break any other core beliefs customers might have related to that vehicle. I learned a cool way to do this from uh, Jason Falden. We were doing a webinar and he kept track of every objection he could think of during the whole thing. At the end, he spent about 90 minutes busting every objection on the list. He'd say, you're probably sit thinking, insert false belief, right? Well, tell a quick epiphany bridge story. You're probably right, thinking that you need a lot of money to drive traffic, right? Well, actually, you only need 100 clicks a day. You're probably thinking you need to know how to code, right? Well, actually, you can just model other people's funnels right inside of ClickFunnels. He went on and on like that for about 50 false beliefs that I hadn't even mentioned in the main webinar. I was starting to sweat because he'd been on for three hours and he was still talking. What were people going to think? But what happened was amazing. At the end of the webinar, we sold three times more during this 90 minutes of you're probably thinking X, right? Than we sold in the first 90 minutes of the webinar. We were live for three hours and had a record breaking day. He just kept breaking false beliefs until there were no more objections anyone could possibly think of. There was absolutely no resistance left. I told my inner circle about what happened. And almost immediately, Brandon and Kaylin Poulin plugged in their supporting Epiphany Bridge stories after they were done teaching each secret. They reported back that this one technique more than doubled their sales from their webinars. So go back to the list of false beliefs that you created in your story inventory. Find the ones associated with the secret and quickly break the beliefs that you'll be holding that will be holding your followers back. These stories are usually told in 30 to 60 seconds. Just mention the false belief and give a quick story in a few sentences about why that belief is wrong and what the truth is. Slide number 14. Introduce your second set of frameworks or internal belief slides. As we transition from secret one to secret two, breaking the internal false beliefs, almost everything will be the same. So I'll just list the steps here to follow. State the secret, introduce the framework's name, share the epiphany bridge story that you learned or earned, teach the strategy of the framework, show the case studies, and share other supporting epiphany bridge stories. The only difference is that you'll be sharing your epiphany bridge story about your internal frameworks. Let me give you an example of how this would look so you can model it for your presentation. In my Funnel Hacks presentation, after telling my origin story and teaching the strategy behind my funnel hacking framework, my audience is sold on the fact that they need funnels if they're going to grow their company online. So the internal false belief that starts to creep up is usually along the lines of, I'm not technically inclined, so I don't think I could build one. That's when I need to introduce a framework that will show that it is possible for them to do it. So the backstory. I used to hire expensive programmers and designers. Journey. My business partner Todd said that he could build a software that would make it easy. New opportunity. He developed click funnels, which made building funnels uh, simple for more people like me. Framework. How to build a funnel in 10 minutes. 
Step one, pick a template you love or use the share funnels. Step two, drag and drop elements to make the template match your brand. Step three, type in your copy and plug in your images on each page. Step four, make sure it looks awesome on mobile. Step five, launch your funnel. The achievement, in less than 10 minutes, with no tech skills, I have a funnel. Slide number 15, introduce your third set of frameworks for external belief slides. Again, moving on to secret number three, breaking external false beliefs, you'll follow the same format with your slides as you did for secrets number one and two. Step one, state the secret. Step two, introduce the framework's name. Step three, share your epiphany bridge story that you learned or earned. Four, teach your strategy of your framework. Five, show your case studies. And six, share other supporting epiphany bridge stories. This third secret is all about your customer's external beliefs. They believe that the funnel is the right vehicle, and they also believe that they could actually build one now. But their fear is that there is some external force that will hold them back from success. The false belief my customers have sounds more like this. I think I could build a funnel, but even if I did, I don't know how to drive traffic to it. Secret number three is where I introduce my framework for helping them get traffic. Backstory. I created a funnel, but it was hard to get traffic. Journey. I tried Google, Facebook, and other ads with little success. New opportunity. I found software uh, that would show me where my competitors were. Uh, we're buying ads and I could just buy them in the same places that they were. Framework, how to get the same customers who are going to your competitors' funnels to come to yours instead. F step one, find a competitor who already has your dream customers. Step two, figure out what sites they are buying ads on. Step three, look at your banner ads, uh, look at what their banner ads look like and model them. Step four, buy ads on the same websites as your competitors. Achievement, Without learning keywords, interest targeting, or any of the technical things, I got a stream of dream customers coming to my funnels every day. That is how you teach the content section of your webinar. If, you're do if you've done it right, you've gotten your audience to believe that your vehicle is the key to them getting their desired results. They should believe that they can actually do it and that there is no external force that could hold them back from success. If those things are true, then they have to give you money and unlock the tactics they need to be able to implement the strategies you just taught them. The next step in this script is making the offer. You are about one hour into the presentation or four sixths of the way done, and now you have 30 minutes or two sixths left to do the stack and the close. You've taken them to the finish line, and now it's time to position your offer in a way where they have to say yes. And so with that, my friends, we will close the book on this chapter of Russell Brunson's Expert Secrets. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Make sure you grab your copy of this fantastic resource down in the description box below. Thank you again for joining me. I will see you in our next episode. And until then, remember, I love you and be excellent to each other.